Pastor Melissa on the first night that we were here introduced us to this idea of the fort. She showed us the first exodus that took place in the garden, the first human exodus that took place in the Garden of Eden. Do you remember the first night that we were here? You, you, you sure? All right, well, I, I, I'll, I'll help you remember just in case. And, 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 you know, she's looked at the creation story. We saw that in six days, God just spoke things into being and they happened. Do you remember that? What, do you remember any of the things he created? Because you lot don't look like you're with me. What sort of, shout out some of the things he created. Light. Oh, there were balloons to help you guys. It's not that hard. Come on. Humans, all right, all right. But the beautiful thing about creation, the beautiful thing about creation is that when you, has anyone played Sims before? Do you know what? I'm going to show my age. You lot told me I was old yesterday. When I was little and Sims came out, you know you couldn't actually walk among them. You kind of floated over the top in the bird's eye view. You remember? And it wasn't black and white before you lot asked that question. And you used to have to float over the top. But you see, when you look at creation, I picture it that God was just hovering over the face of the earth and he just spoke and said, listen, I want trees to come up over there. And boom, trees just came up. He said, you know, it looks like there should be some mountains over there. And boom, mountains came up. But when it came to the most important part of his creation, when it came to the thing that mattered the most to God, the most precious, valuable part of his creation, God said, no, 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 I can't just talk this thing into being. He had to come out of heaven. He steps down onto earth and he begins to shape something in the dirt. Do you know what he was shaping? Do you know? You can tell me. You can talk to me. Do you, do you know what he was shaping? He was shaping man. He was shaping Adam. And he breathes the breath of life into Adam. And he says, you, you, listen, you're the crowning jewels of my creation. All of this stuff that I've made here, I've made it all for you. Things are perfect. Things are good. Adam gets a bit lonely. God creates a woman. They're living a wonderful life. Husband and wife in paradise. But you know, people are not always happy when things are perfect for you. And a little serpent comes along. He slivers up to Eve. He whispers a little something in her ear. And now we see that because... Eve listens to the serpent and takes the fruit that she was forbidden to eat. Sin now enters the world. And because of sin, the Bible says the wages of sin is what? Is death, right? So because of sin, we all have this death sentence hanging over our heads. Did you know that? The Bible says we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So naturally, as human beings, as sinful as we are, we should really be sentenced to death. But God says, listen, I love you so much. You're the most precious part of my creation. I value you too much to let you die. He says, I'm not going to give up on you. So you know what he does? He puts a plan in place that we don't have to suffer that consequence. Isn't that good? You lot don't seem like you're with me. Let me come down closer. You lot, I don't like when you don't talk to me, you know. Has anyone been in love before? No, no, no. Okay, the people that haven't, you, I'm going to ask the ones that have. Has anyone been in love before? Now, you married folk, you should definitely say yes. The cameras are looking at you. And you younger ones, don't you love your parents? You older ones, who, rem who remembers when they were in school? You remember school? And I remember, I'm going to share a secret with you. My little brother is here, so you can close your ears. Don't listen to these things. When I was in school, you know, I noticed that the girls never used to wear coats to school. Why did you lot never bring coats? And in the cold winter times, they used to, they, they, they used to just turn up, right? And you see them shivering outside. So you know what I used to do? I would deliberately get a coat. Let me get my coat. Hold on, let me get my coat. I would deliberately get my coat, right? And I'll be in my room before school. And you take out that bottle of aftershave you got for your birthday. And you spray. And you know, you can't spray it directly on the fabric sometimes. Because it's like, you have to spray like this. And <laughs> get it on the coat, right? And then you put on the coat at school. And you put on the coat. And you have to really make sure that it looks like you need it. So, oh, it's a bit cold outside. 
and you're there and you wrap up and then you see that one girl. No. So you see this girl, right? No, but you got a coat on. Wait, wait, wait. Go. You see this girl, right? You have to come to the top so they can see you, all right? And she's standing there at the bus stop looking all cold. And you, and, and, and you come over and you say, it's like, D do you want my jacket? And, then, <laughs> and when you put it around her and then, and then you see her do this deep inhale. And then, no, don't smell this one, but no. And then when she smells that aftershave that you sprayed in the morning, you see the twinkle in her eyes. She says, I think I'm in love. <laughs> Thank you very much. And then, and then I remember, this is going to show how old. Does anyone remember Five Day Pass? The older people might remember this one. Before you had unlimited minutes all the time, we used to have to top up five pound on your mobile. And then you had to call up the number and then they'll give you five days of unlimited calls and texts. So when you get home, please do not try this at home. I'm just, confession is good for the soul, they said. When you get home, you, go, uh, you used to say, Dad, I'm tired. Gonna have an early night. Go upstairs into your room. And there's something about later times in the night, your voice seems to drop some octaves. I know my voice is high now, but at a certain time, it drops some octaves. And when you take out the five-day pass and you call your friend to do devotion. And when she hears the bass line on the voice, she says, I think I'm in love. And you know, but on a serious note, some of you married folk, you know, you meet your husband, you meet your wife, and, 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 and you're so overwhelmed by all the amazing things that they're doing, and you're so attracted and so in love, and you value that person. So you're going to spend the rest of your life with this person. They can do no wrong in your eyes. Until. Five day pass runs out. You don't get any phone calls anymore. I get a bit cold and in fact, Bethany, I want my jacket back. Where is it? And all of a sudden, this love that was once reflected in, your, in the eyes of that person is replaced by upset, by hurt, by anger. When the person we love makes a mistake, when they do something to hurt us, we don't like them or love them anymore. Is that true? Am, am I talking the truth? You know, your brothers, your sisters, you love them and then you get in a bit of a fight. You say, I don't, I don't love you anymore. Because naturally, as human beings, our love is a conditional love. It's based on what we can receive from others. It's based on what we get from others. But the beautiful thing about our God is that God loves us with an unconditional love. It's, we don't do anything to earn it. We, we, we can't, we, it's not that we deserve God's love. It's not that because we're here at camp meeting, that means that we're, camp meeting, you, you started, look where you started. At Campari, that it, it, it automatically qualifies us for God's love. But God says, I love you regardless. When you turn your back on me, I still love you. When you make your mistakes, I still love you. Why? Because you are the most important and valuable part of my creation. Grab your Bibles and turn with me to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. And this is my, my favorite passage in the whole Bible. And Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 from the New King James Version simply says this says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us, that while we were still sinners, Christ came 
and died for us. While we were still messed up, while we were still struggling, while we still didn't want to turn up to devotion in the morning, Christ loves us so much that he came and died for us. And he didn't even come and die a really easy, straightforward death. But when you read down there in the passage and you follow the account, you see that Christ is this, this perfect being. That all he did was love and teach and, 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 and heal and share. They say that you, that, you know, when you read the passage, can I share the story very quickly with you? I might need a few people to volunteer. You know, if you want to volunteer, just sit on this bench right here so I can call you up quickly. Right? Sit on that front bench here and I'll grab you as we go along, okay? So when you read it, uh, uh, the account in the Gospels, you see that, all right, okay, that's enough. That, okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> The whole camp, all right. So when you read the account in the Gospels, you see that in the beginning, Jesus understands that his time is coming to an end and he gathers his disciples together and they're praying together and the guards come along. See, there's too many of you now. I need to try and make this work. Who's going to be Jesus for me? Whoa. You are so proud. Okay. And I need some guards. Okay, I'm going to take you two on the end, my friend here. Okay, you, so you come, 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 okay. Where's my Jesus? Jesus, I need you to be praying, okay? And my brother, you come, 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 come. You're going to be Judas for me, okay? I hear people go, ooh, okay, all right. So Judas, Judas comes along with the guards. Jesus is praying, Jesus is praying, and Judas comes along with the guards. And Judas comes and he, he just kisses the head of Jesus. Do my hand, do my hand, do my hand, do my hand. Yes. And... The Bible, that's what the Bible says. And this is a sign that Jesus is the one that, that this is Jesus and the guards come along. Guards, you need to be assertive, guards. And they grab Jesus. And they take Jesus away. Judas runs off the stage somewhere. And the guards stay in the corner of the stage just there somewhere. And they take Jesus away and then they bring Jesus into, in, 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 whoa. Come, come, come. They bring Jesus and they throw all kinds of accusations and all sorts of things on him. And even though Jesus is, 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 is without sin and, and without void and without shame, they accuse him of all these things and they sentence him to death. And the Jews are carrying on the same ones that he was preaching to. The same ones that he was uh, uh, healing, the same ones that he walked among, they, they, they were the same ones crying out for him to be put to death. And my friend Judas, you're now going to be Barabbas. Come. So Pilate comes along and Pilate says, you know what, I have an ingenious plan. Because it's the time, come, come, come. Because it's time of year in the festivities, we always release one prisoner, right? And I said, these are two people here. Says, this is Jesus. This is Jesus, the one that has loved you and healed you and, 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 and raised your children from the dead. The one that has been preaching and doing nothing but good in your communities. Says, this is Barabbas. The one that's been stealing from you. The one that's been bullying all of you guys. The one that has been throwing, you're doing some terrible, terrible, terrible things. Which one would you like? to release which one would you say logically who would you say for them to let go Jesus right but you know what they said let the evil one go the one that's been torturing I know you're a good person really okay it's just for the okay let the evil one go let him go and they said crucify him crucify him crucify thank you so much God thank you thank you thank you Jesus where are you going stay we need to get through this in eight minutes, okay? So, 
They tell them, they, 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 they shout for him to be crucified and they lead him down a little corridor. And as they lead him down the corridor, the people, they start to punch him and kick him. You need to walk this way now because there's no more stage left. Punch him and kick him and kick him and throw stuff at him. And Jesus continues to walk and walk until he gets into a courtyard. And when he gets into the courtyard, they start to come and they spit on him. And the Bible says they spit until his face was covered. And I know some of you guys, when you think of spit, you think of that lovely frothy thing that did. I imagine that it was that phlegm that comes from the back of your throat. Some of you guys don't know about phlegm. I used to go to, to I used to go to John Loughborough School, and we used to go to the park for PE, right? When we was playing PE, and there's a park down the road from us, and it's a public park, so there's quite a few people that were playing there. And I, I remember I was playing football, right? Playing football, playing football, coming along, and I went me like a crazy person, went to do a slide tackle. I slid like this, and I went slip some more. I said, what is that? And when I got up and I looked on the side of my shorts, I saw this phlegm thing. And I took, and you know when you try to shake it off like this? And it was so thick that it kind of hung down like this. The Bible says, that they spat at Jesus until his face was covered. And as his face is covered by the spit now, they, 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 they took whips and they start to whip him and whip him and whip him. And it wasn't even normal whips. When I looked at the way they created the, rip, the whips at the time, they used to take animal bones and broken pottery and weave it with the leather so that when they would whip, the person they would whip Jesus and the broken pottery and bones would dig into his flesh and as they pulled the whip away it will rip parts of his flesh out as well and he's there and he's hungry he's tired he cannot see because the spit is covering his face his back is pouring with blood and what do they choose to do they take some fawns they twist it into a crown and they place it on Jesus' head. And some of you guys don't know about fawns. You only know the pretty rosebush fawns out there. But I don't know if there's any Jamaicans in the house. But I remember one of the times I was back in Jamaica. And you know Jamaicans are really terrible. Because I am a Jamaican through and through. But when I go to Jamaica, I'm the British youth from foreign. So when I'm with my family, I'm going to wrap it up. When I'm with my family, I have to prove to them that this British youth from foreign knows Jamaica as well. So I went down to a little place. Yes, there is a place called Mitchell Town in Clarendon. Anybody know Mitchell Town? No, because it's country, bush, bush country. And when I was in that little place in Mitchell Town, where one light serves the whole district, I waited till it was late in the evening. And I said, I'm going to take all of my cousins. Cousins, come and join me really, really quickly. Cousins, come, come, come. Come, cousins, come, come, come really quickly. I'm going to take all my cousins. And we're going to go for a walk at the night time. Show that the British youth from foreign knows Jamaica, right? And we're walking along. All of them following British youth from foreign. Walking along. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm walking with confidence. And the place is so dark when you hold up your hand. You can't even see your hand in front of you. And as we're walking, I, I, I heard something and I said, well, to be honest, before that, I like to play tricks. So I was walking around and I scared them. I said, what's that? And they would jump. <laughs> or I'd run up behind them and I, I, I grab the back of their leg and you see them jump like this. So then when I really heard something in the bushes, right, I asked them, did you hear that? They start to cuss after me. So I should stop playing jokes and I said, all right. We walked a little bit further. Jesus, I heard something in the bushes again. And I said, this time, are you sure you didn't hear that? And they got upset with me. I said, don't worry. 
I'm going to stand in the middle of all of you. So I can protect all of you if something happens. And as I'm walking in the middle, they start to say, Ashley, you're so brave. In the middle for all of one. They didn't know the middle is the safest place to be. Thank you so much, cousin. Thank you. And as we're walking now, we're walking. No joke. The road went up on a hill like this. I saw something darker than the darkness itself. And it was just moving towards us in a steady motion. Like I, ca- I was not asking twice. I grabbed my sister that was with me and I ran for my life. And I didn't have the pretty shoes like you guys. I was running in the flip-flops. <laughs> and you know when you're running in the flip-flops and they slap in your foot, slap, 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 you're running in the locker. And I, as I'm running, I feel this. I, there was one light far in the distance. I said, if I can get to the light, I will be safe. And I'm running for this light now. And I can feel something cutting up on my foot. But I said, I don't want to look behind. So I kept running. And as I got to the light, my feet were in pain. I looked, I looked at my feet. And the only thing left of the flip-flops was the plastic bit that goes between your toes. <laughs> I said, I said, what has happened? How has this happened? And, and, and when I looked, I, I, my feet were bleeding. And, and you know what it was? Maka. I said, what is that? Some razor sharp. Listen, I should have got a picture. Tomorrow I'll put it up on the screen for you. Some razor sharp thorns that were, that uh, then things that I don't even know how to describe it. They, I imagine that it was those razor sharp long thorns that they twisted into a crown of thorns. And they placed it on Jesus' head. And they didn't even just rest it on the top. But they knocked it in so that the thorns would go into his head to keep it in place. And as the blood pours down his face, mixed up with the phlegm. They then say, Jesus, get up and carry your cross. They put the cross on his back and he falls to his feet. They take it off, they drag him up and they put the cross on his back again. He falls to his feet. He's so weak at this point, he can't see where he's going. A man comes along and decides, don't worry, I will carry the cross for you. They carry him up the hill. And when they get to the top of the hill now, They lay out the cross on the ground and they spread Jesus. Are you just going to stand for this one? Okay. They spread Jesus out on the cross. Turn and face these guys for me. All right. They spread Jesus out on the cross. And I know some of you guys, I've I've seen some of the tent pegs. You seen the tent pegs outside? The big ones for the kitchen tent. They took some big old tent pegs like that and they drove it through his hand. It ripped through his flesh. It cracked through the bones and went into the wood behind. And Jesus shouts out in pain. Can we help Jesus shout? And all he can do is turn his head to the other side and watch them do it to the other hand. Rip through the flesh, crack through the bone. And into the woods. And then they come and they do the same to his feet. And then they lift up the cross. And they drop the cross into the ground. And the shockwave goes through his body. And all of his weight is hanging there now. And, 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 and he says, listen, I, I, I'm so thirsty. I just need something to drink. And they turn around and they give him a bit of vinegar wine. And some of you guys don't think that's deep. I played a trick on my uncle one time. I, I, I tried to... I, you know malt vinegar, the clear one? I put some malt vinegar in a glass. In a glass. It was a hot day. I said, Uncle, you look so hot. Have something to drink. And I ran off laughing. Ha, 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 ha. I thought I got him. The guy turned around and he came back with a glass of condensation around it. He said, you look thirsty, Asha. Have a drink. When I tried some of this thing that looked like water, the vinegar, it dried up every last bit of moisture in my mouth. You know when you try to get the spit and you can't even get the spit in your mouth? It dried it up and now we see that this is what they give to Jesus. He's on the cross. He's in, he's in pain. He, he asks for something to drink and they dry up the last bit of moisture in his mouth. We see that he hangs there in pain. 
in agony and he's there and, and, and you need to understand that this is still the almighty God Jesus. Some of us think that it's a helpless person. Some of us think, oh, he's just a human that can't do anything. But this is the same Jesus that if he just blinked his eye, he could have wiped all of them out one time. But as he hung on the cross, he looked a few thousand years down the line into TED Campari 2019. And he saw that there was someone here this morning that was in need of a savior. He looked at our lives and he looked at our condition and he says, I'm doing it for you. As they spit on him, he says, I'm doing it for you. As they hit him, they say, he said, I'm doing it for you. As they pierced his side, he said, I'm doing it for you. Why? Because you are the most important, valuable, and precious part of my creation. When you look at the story, see that Jesus dies. Dies the death that we were supposed to die. Because of the sin that we have committed. But he says, I don't want you to have to face the consequence. So I'm going to take the consequence. So that you can choose to be treated like the royalty that I originally ordained you to be. Is there anybody that wants to be royalty today? Is there anybody that is just so happy and excited that Jesus loved them enough to die for them? So that you don't have to face the consequences of sin. But the beautiful thing about the story, he dies. Thank you so much. He dies. They put him in a tomb. Everybody's sad. Everybody's dying. Everybody's sad. Everybody's crying. Everybody thinks that that's it. But then a few, he rests on the Friday. He rests on the Sabbath. And on Sunday morning, we see that the angel comes out from heaven. And he flies down onto earth. And he kicks away the stone. And Jesus steps out of the grave. And he says, now I'm victorious. And he goes to heaven. And he says now that he sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. You know what that means? That when we're here and we're struggling and we're suffering, he simply says that he's praying to the Father. Father, forgive them, forgive them, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. I know my time is gone, so I'm going to just wrap up right here and now. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Uh, but if there is someone here today that is just grateful for the sacrifice that Jesus has made for them, and you want to say, Jesus, I don't want your sacrifice to be in vain. I recognize that I am not perfect. I know that I make some mistakes sometimes. But I know that you love me despite my mistakes. I want you to raise your hand somewhere so I can see you. Everyone's heads are bowed and closed. No one else is watching. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. You recognize that Jesus has made the sacrifice for you. He has died for you so that you can have the chance of eternal life. And today you say you want to do something about it. You haven't yet made a decision to commit and surrender entirely to Christ but you want to do something about it and you want to say Asha just pray with me study with me prepare me so that sometime in the future I can take that step and go down into the pool I want you to just wave at me so I can see you God bless you I see your hands I see your hands I see your hands God bless you God bless you let's pray waiting to enter your heart why won't you let him come in there's nothing in this world to keep you apart what is your answer Father in heaven, today we are just so grateful for the sacrifice you have made for us. 
we know that the time is gone and I'm sorry, but we, we're just excited that there are people today that recognize that you are the almighty God who loves them and cares for them despite of the mistakes we make, despite of the challenges we face. You loved us so much that you came and died for us. And all we need to do is accept your sacrifice, surrender entirely to you, and claim the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. So today we thank you for the decisions that have been made. It is my prayer that you will seal them in heaven and on earth, that as we continue through this week, that your Holy Spirit will prick the hearts of those of us that need to make a decision. And even those of us that made decisions years ago and have drifted far away, it is my prayer in the name of Jesus that you will draw us back to you and that you will forgive us. That you will forgive us, Father. Lord, you said that. <sighs> Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And for too long we've been guilty. For too long we've been built and beating ourselves up. But today we recognize that you've died. You've taken the penalty for us. And we don't have to be guilty anymore. So Lord bless us as we leave this place. Give us a great blessing. And allow our lives to be an example to all we come in contact with. Throughout the rest of this week. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. And amen.